Hi folks, this is the commercially available Copenhagen solar cooker. After using it for a while, I've fallen in love with its powerful reflective panels. It cooks better than my homemade one, since these panels don't have any wrinkles. It's from Sharon Clausen at sclaustoys.com. Here I am unboxing it. It arrived in a nice small package. So what do we have? Assembly instructions, cooking tips, and other information. Two boards, four reflective panels, a shoelace for connecting the panels to the boards, four clips for connecting the panels together at the tops, and a handy carrying bag. As you can see, it's very portable and lightweight. Assembly is simply a matter of lacing it up and it takes only a minute. Notice that I leave around 6 inches of shoelace below the first hole. This will be for tying up the two ends later in the last step. One wooden board goes above the panels and the other below. After one corner of the first panel is attached between the boards, each additional panel is slid in between the boards and then threaded in place at the two corners. Be careful not to scratch the reflective panels. They don't scratch easily, but scraping against asphalt, like I'm doing here, is probably something to avoid. The first step in arranging the panels is to clip them together. I aim it at the sun by looking at the shadow behind it. You can see the shadow is clearly lopsided. And now it's not. Here I'm warming up some beans while also cooking some fresh carrots I chopped up. You want a dark cooking pot. The blacker and less reflective the better. And then you want to put this in some sort of clear outer container. In my case two Pyrex bowls, one on top of the other. All sorts of things will do. A thermometer placed outside the pot like this won't tell you the temperature of the food, but it will tell you whether anything is happening at all. Next, you have to get as much of the panels to reflect sunlight to the cooking pot as possible. There are many ways to do this. One way is to pretend that your head is the sun. Pick a panel to start with, for example the front panel, and look at it with your head's shadow on the panel. Since the sun is creating that shadow, what you see reflected on the panel is what the sun would see if your head wasn't in the way. Clearly here the sun wouldn't be seeing the pot, which means the sunlight wouldn't be reflecting to the pot. But if I increase the angle of the panel, and put my head shadow on the front panel again, now I see the pot, and that's where the sun will reflect to. And here's what I see with my head shadow on a well-adjusted back panel, and the side panels. In general, if the sun is low in the sky, then you'll end up with something like this, where the front panel is fairly low, and the back panel is high up, almost hovering over the cooking pot. If the sun is high in the sky, then you'll end up with something like this. The front panel is much higher, and the back panel is still fairly high up. And after around an hour, here's the end result. Nice, soft, carrots perfect. And now for a little montage of some of what I and others have cooked using this Copenhagen solar cooker.
These Copenhagen solar cookers are about the cheapest solar cookers you can buy. And as you just saw, they work very well. I got mine from sclaustoys.com, but you can also get them from eBay by searching for Copenhagen solar cooker. Also, most places that sell a variety of solar cookers have them. Well, thanks for watching. Check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more solar cooking videos. That includes one about a solar cooker made using a mirror and a Fresnel lens taken from a rear projection TV, a car sunshade solar cooker, and a cardboard and an aluminum foil modified cook it solar cooker. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!